South Africa. I can see you there. Karibu sana. The issue of our young people when they're in school in something I'm calling identity versus raw confusion among learners. Uh, as you have heard, I'm a teacher, a trained profession. And um, in my line of teaching, in combination of counseling, I've come to realize that this stage of identity versus raw confusion has a lot of impact on our learners. As we all know as psychologists that this is the fifth stage of development according to the psychologist who is, we know very well, Eric Erickson, and it occurs between 12 to 19 years, and actually this is the time when our learners are in high school. Uh, one feature about this stage of development is that the young people, after they have gone through the other four stages of development, when they reach this stage, they want to explore their independence. And they also want to develop a sense of self. They want to feel that now they belong. They have been under the care of their parents since birth. They have been under the control of their parents since birth. Majority of them, it is the time they are operating away from the parents. As in, they were in boarding school, maybe primary schools were in day schools, in most of our high schools, they go to boarding schools. So other than that detachment from the physical parents, they also have that uh, the physical feeling that they are away. They, are, they want to be independent and they want to develop their sense of belonging. They want to find out why am I in this world? And as they find their identity, they, they want to find out whom do I identify with. And in the process, it can affect their even academic, as we are going to see, and it can lead to some sort of confusion in their life. So let's go through and see how this happens. Um, what we know is that at the end of this stage, the young adults should have identified their space in relation to the career choice and the social interactions. I, I want to draw your attention to the fact that when children reach this stage, there's something so special which happens in terms of their social interaction. The previous stage is whereby they have been trying to identify the, their, their life in terms of fighting autonomy. We have the, the, the other stages which do take place, whereby they start, the first one is trust versus mistrust, which ends at 18 months, and then they take over the autonomy, whereby they either develop their own independence or they develop shame in trying to do things of their own, and then now they go to the three, five years, where they have the initiative versus the guilt. And now before they enter this stage, they are from this stage we call the industry versus inferiority complex. Now, if a learner did not go through the previous stage, before coming to this stage of now the identity versus raw confusion, it can affect them in this process of identifying their space in, in, the, in this universe. They want now, they have been working with the parents, they have been listening to the parents, they have been under the control and the guidance of parents almost 24 7. So now they want now to find out who am I? What is my next stage of life? What am I going to think about? As a teacher, we normally give our students the choice to decide on their career after from two is when in our Kenyan system, we allow the children to make the career choices. So most of them, when they were young, they had a big degree. Now they have come to high school, and some of them have seen the reality of the matter. So in that process of trying to even choose the career, it has a lot of influence on what they went through previously, and it can affect them in a big way. When you talk about social interaction, these are the same young people, and they go to 
I used to do. So the other Hello, Jocelyn. Hello, Jocelyn. Yes. I want to pause you there a little bit. Hello. As, uh, hello. I want you to pause yes. there a little bit. Yes. And check on your sound. Oh, it's not clear. Yes, now we can hear you, but at some point we were losing you. Oh, boy. Yes, now we can hear you. And then see how you can take us slowly as you go with the session, so that we don't get lost at some okay. point. Okay, fine. Yes, and, and to our presenters, uh, sorry, and to our listeners, as we continue, we want you to share with us what is your most memorable experience of your high school life? Um, I forgot to ask as I was starting, but in the chat section, even as oh. Justin is presenting, we want to be able to see, even yeah. as we are parenting our children and bringing them up, from what we remember, what is your most memorable experience of your high school life? So thank you, Jocelyn. Okay, I hope I'm audible now to everybody. Yes, you're audible. See how you can take us slowly and systematically even as you guide us through. Karibu. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, so um, I've gone a slightly behind, so, but I don't know where to see what the number of you may have lost me so that we can move and understand this concept. So we are talking about identity versus raw confusion in relationship education of our children and you have uh, seen that this is the safety stage of development according to the psychologist Eric Erickson according to his theory of development the psychosocial development theory and uh, I have mentioned that this change occurs during the years we call adolescence or teenage with the span of 19 years I have also mentioned that this is the age most of our children leave our homes and they go to the high school, they go to boarding schools. Majority is the first time to be away from home, from the parents. It is the time to be away from the, that, that control of the parents. So they want to discover themselves it is the stage they want to find their independence. And at the same time, they want to develop a sense of belonging. Why are they here or not? And uh, I was just now talking about, by the end of this stage, the young person, whom now we call the young adult after 19 years, should be able to identify their space in relation to career, and also in relation to the social interaction. I hope that this is okay. Yeah? Um, yes, yes, it is, Jocelyn. Yes, we can hear you very well so uh, far. So far, so good, we are together. Okay, thank yes. you. That's what I wanted us to know. Yes, okay. and, 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 and I'm, re I'm requesting, as you continue with the presentation. Yes. It seems when you lean when you lean back, we lose you. So the way you are seated forward, that's the yes. way you could adopt that posture for us as you continue. It seems what when you the way you are the way you are the way where, the way you are uh, you are posing now, we can hear you very well. But when you lean back into the chair, we lose you. Oh. Yes, yeah, so, so see how you Great. can minimize, minimize them move, moving back, stay where you are at the moment. That way we can hear you very well. Fine, thank you. Um, trying to move this thing from where I am so that it can uh, not affect me. Wow, so we are good to go. So I was saying that at the end of this, Change which we are calling the identity versus rock confusion. This young adult now should come out when they are able to identify their space in this world. And physically, in this age, the main thing which is the, I mean, the major things which happen to this young person is about career choices, 
and the social interactions. Those are the two aspects which are a major at this stage of development. And uh, I had just mentioned that whatever happens at this stage, it's so much influenced by what had happened there before as the child was growing up. For example, if the child had issues in the first stage of development, which Eric Erickson refers to as trust versus mistrust, uh, the child is going to have some issues in choosing the career. And this is where now even the parental influence may come in. The child may not be themselves in choosing the career because they didn't learn that aspect of trust. In the same uh, vein, if a child had issues of autonomy at the 18 months to three years, this child may have issues in deciding, what do I want? And this child may end up not occupying their real space here or not. The parent may have more say, and because the child has not developed that aspect of autonomy, the child may not have issues to resist what the parent is saying. The same thing would happen if the issue of industry, which is five to 32 years, was not well covered by this child. It can affect this age, but today we want to concentrate more on the stage of identity versus raw confusion. And I've said, if a child is not able to identify their space, what happens is the opposite, which is now the loss, they get lost into confusion. And uh, you find today a child is doing, doing this, they go to the university, they do a course halfway, they drop it, they feel like that is not where I'm supposed to be, they go for another course, they drop it, the others go for a course, up with they hide, they drop, they don't let the parents to know, and the parents get uh, persistent at the end of it. But the whole thing started from the, the that point when the child was supposed to identify themselves. Some of them may be forced into a career, a math teacher, and I know that I've experienced that. And when they go along with they reach a point and they're like, enough is enough. I cannot continue with this. So that brings some conflict and obviously the distress, which can cause mental health issues and all that. So um, one thing I want us to realize this evening is that has teens concentrate on this aspect of identifying themselves and trying to find their space here or not, they may sometimes divert their energy from books. Um, some students have been doing so well, especially in primary school, majority of us have witnessed such cases. As a, a people who did so well in primary, and they went to a good school. And you find by the end of form four, the grade they are getting is not related to what they had got in primary school. But some of them could get a good student who scored over 350 marks. They go to high school, by the end of the year, best grade they can come up with is a C, which does not measure to their performance in primary school. So some of these issues are normally as a result of a, a, a teenager who gets more lost into the issues of identity and they lose their energy and their concentration in books. So this evening, we want to find out why would this stage of identity versus raw confusion affect the learner? In which way does this affect? And towards the end, we shall be asking ourselves, what can a parent or a teacher or any adult in terms of a young person do or what is their contribution so that we don't have such setback on our young uh, thank you thank you thank you Jocelyn. as we continue yes i want to bring in some very interesting comments i'm seeing from our our, our participants as they're going on in the session yes 
and I've asked them what are some of the memorable memories they have uh, about their high school experience or a yeah. high school life. And somebody is saying, <laughs> Sister Florence, and I think yeah. I know it, I've seen you before, getting frustrated because of being denied yeah. freedom to wear a mini skirt. Uh, hi, Sister Florence. You know, by virtue of being a sister, hi. it means you wear a long skirt. So this is a contract. Clearly, you are having identity versus role confusion at this point. Of course, that was teenage crisis. <laughs> uh -huh. When did you move into sisterhood? Oh, after, of course, after 18. Okay. <laughs> Above 18. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then um, somebody else has shared a very good point. Thank yeah. you, Sister. I want to share with someone else has said, there's something they remember that was a bit unpleasant. They said, I did wet my bed in high school and this affected how mm. I was able to socialize with other girls. Even in my shame, I found loving and accepting friends. I found loving, oh yeah, which made things much easier for me. Okay. And then someone else has said, um, for me, it was a time to, of realizing who I was as an individual what I can do and what I need to put more effort into. Learning from mistakes and all. It was an interesting time of highs and lows, but I think I turned out okay. Mm -hmm. um, here we have someone saying, uh, Sunny Bonani greetings. Most memorable is transitioning to high school from an Indian school to a colored school in South Africa in the 80s. I was the colored child in the Indian school, and here I was with so many colored children. A time to assimilate or focusing on my <laughs> academic strength. I established my place academically, lost to navigate for as a teenager. Um, and even as I read this, I want you just need to wait before we continue with the slide presentation, just to be able to respond to some of these things. Yes. I'm hearing transitioning, I'm hearing academics, mm -hmm. I'm hearing the mini skirts, I'm hearing bedwetting. It's as if somebody, uh, is, they haven't yeah. really grasped who am I and trying to understand yeah. that, you know. So even as you continue, just yeah. try to, to, to help us understand what happens at this yeah. stage yeah. and maybe what should we put in mind as we are helping our high school um, young people cope with that as they are in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, great. Uh, so, uh, one of the things, uh, Madam Helen, that happens when children are at this stage, as they are growing up, as I've said, they are trying to develop identity, or bit somewhere along my presentation, but I can touch on it a bit. Uh, because of what they have been seeing, at this stage, the, the, the child wants to have their own identity, physically away from that of the parents. Actually, along, we'll look at it as we move on. So they want to develop their own identity, which is completely most of the time away from the parents. They have looked at the shortcomings of the parents and they want to do everything possible, which is opposite of what the parents have done. So they want to see things in their own world. They think that solutions are here. Actually, as we move on, we'll see that adolescents have no future. Teenagers, their future is now. If you address their issues in terms of the future, they don't see the future. They want now. Now, on the issue of the mini uh, at the previous stage, I'll say something very interesting here. At the stage of literacy versus inferiority, this is the time children go home and start crying and say, I will not go back to school because teacher made me sit with a boy. If it is a girl, or say they were meant to sit with a boy, they don't go to, go to school because of that. A boy will go home crying because they have been told to sit with a girl. So there's that, that change, the industry versus inferiority. One of the things which comes very strongly is that repassion they don't want to be naked next to the opposite sex they just want to be on their own they, they, they can miss school they can cry because of being told to go home to go and sit with her at the opposite sex now when they reach now the intimacy this is the time they are preparing for adulthood the hormones 
that cause now the attraction between the opposite sex is now trying to develop. So they want to be seen by the opposite sex. They feel like now they gain all their confidence. Those of you listening here, you'll agree with me. If you are in a single sex school and you are told to go, you are going for a function. If it was in a boys' school, you are very conscious if you are a girl, how you dress. If it was a girls' school, you are very conscious as a boy, how you dress. Because that at this point now, being attracted by the opposite sex, it is the major thing. That is where they derive the pleasure. Remember that we, as we move on from stage to stage, when the, the trust and versus trust, their, their, their pressure is anu. That is where they, they, they drive pressure. They bite the mother when they are fasting. Yeah, they, they feel they, 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 they that feeling. When they move to the next stage, it moves now to the anu. They, bed, they were bedwetting and the like. So it moves. So the, that which makes the children feel now they are alive, they are being uh, noticed. They, they feel best at the the, the identity versus confusion stage is that of attraction from the opposite sex. So if they can be seen as much of their body as possible, that now gives them a lot of a, a, a satisfaction. I think that's the way I would address that bit of the minister. Okay, thank you, Jocelyn. We can continue with your presentation. Okay. Yeah, so let's why the, the teenagers would concentrate in other things and forget the books. I would give you a list of the, the fundamentals of development. We have the physical, cognitive, and social of the language. And along the way, at the cognitive development based on the Jean Piaget theory. In this, according uh, to Jean Piaget, this stage of identity versus the raw confusion is actually the last stage according to the development theory, the former operational stage. So from further onwards, this is when a child is able to think abstractly. The child is able to reason and make hypothetical uh, decisions, also hypothetical problems. They are able to think more about morals. They can question philosophy. They can question the social aspects. They can question the political issues because they have now become more critical in their thinking. And they can raise questions about things they previously accepted as gospel truth. And that is where now where the issue of now questioning parenting, questioning the authority comes in. As this stage sets in, uh, you'll find that when, this, when young people start thinking, this abstract thinking and start reasoning is when they want to divert from the morals the parents taught them. And that is when they'll start even questioning, why should I rest like my parents? Why should I do the career my parents have been talking about? Why should we obey the school rules? If you agree with me, you'll handle here of strikes in primary school. But when this stage comes, when they start now this uh, 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 philosophical thinking, they start questioning uh, authority, is when they, they think like, why, why should we get here in school? Suppose we even burnt the dormitory. We can go home and we can do other things. And as they do this, uh, according to Eric Erickson, the, the, this stage of identity versus raw confusion, to, uh, I mean, learners or uh, human beings develop what we call the virtue of fidelity. What I mean by fidelity is that ability to accept other people's thinking and their reasoning, and even if it doesn't, you don't agree with it. You, you, can, you can accept that. That is what we call fidelity. That's why we say when children are maybe involved in sex issues before 18 years, it's referred to as infidelity because they were, they were not in a position to make that informed reasoning as far as that issue is concerned. So fidelity develops at this stage. Um, 
when we talk of fidelity, it gives you that opportunity to sit down and make a decision. Do I want this or not? And the recent at this stage do not have the virtue of fidelity. And that is why mob psychology becomes more rampant at this stage. They move with peer pressure. We know we have always associated peer pressure with, with the teenagers, even us adults, we have the issues of peer pressure. But because our fidelity is more is, is whatever developed, we don't just act for the sake of it. But for these young people at this age, fidelity is not developed. So peer pressure becomes an issue for them. They just move with their way and it becomes a big challenge because of that stage. So these people will begin to reason from general principle yeah, to specific information. They, they, they will not be seated there and just look at one thing at a, at a time. They look at the general things. What have we been taught? What morals have my parents been trying to impart in me from when I grew up? What stories or what information have the teachers been trying to put in me? And then now, what about more specific? Is it reasonable? Does it make sense? And in the process, that is when now a parent or a teacher may think that the child is becoming a discipline. But they are now on something more specific. So we are taught to obey this. Is it necessary? We are taught to go to that. Is it is it a must I go to that? Then now when the parent and the parent bring in the, the, the issue of you are you are disobedient and all that. So it's a stage where we start listening from general principles who are more specific, want to be more specific. Why is it they want to question everything? And at the same time, they gain ability to systematically plan for future. But this is very gradual, and we see it towards the end of the age as the fidelity take in as they have identified themselves. But if they have not identified themselves, this ability to systematically plan for the future does not peak. So it ends up now the raw confusion. And this is why we are talking of people even not doing what idea they want. You talk to someone who is after comfort and you ask, you ask them, what do you want to do? I don't know my parents don't know which course I'll go to. So they have not yet developed that fidelity. And they also start reasoning about hypothetical situations. I think I've talked a bit about that. Um, just at that particular point, I want to just weigh in on something you've mentioned and just to to, to, to get some clarification. So when we see, yes. when we see even us, even me, when and that's, I, I had, we, we had the, the, the desire or the push to question things and to ask why. Yes. And you know, from, a, from some of our parenting styles, parents don't want to hear you questioning anything. They, they say it because yes. I said so. Yes. And that brings that's in the right. conflict between, a, between the parent and the young adult, or the teenager or the high schooler. So I'm I'm hearing yes. from you why why our teenagers they question why they what you call rebellion quote unquote what you call they what yes. you call what you say they are rebelling they are they're not rebelling they are in a stage whereby they are, they are acquiring a new way of seeing things and a new way of thinking about particular issues so I think for us as parents exactly. it's more of, we are trying to understand um, last year or a few months ago you were this child who was obedient and. Uh, didn't even want anything to do with boys or girls. And then now um, I'm seeing a different uh, person altogether who is questioning why I say things, who wants to understand, who wants to be given a viable reason. So I, I'm hearing a lot from you. Okay. Thank yes. you so much, Helen. I believe you are all of us learning. And at the end of this, we are going to handle our young people from a different perspective. Remember most of us parents, uh, want our children to substitute our shortcomings. But this child is an identity on their own. So you, if you miss something in life, you cannot make your children live your life. They have their own life. And those conflicts will come 
if you don't give them the freedom to become their own. That is where conflict starts. And that is where now we lose our young people because when we don't give them that freedom to be themselves, in the process of confusion, they will look for solace, they will look for comfort in other things which we may not want, including going into drug addiction. So just lead, as you continue, okay. just, just so help us, help, uh, as, you, as you continue, help, help us be able to understand. So when, when, I, when a yeah. parent is having a teenager, because I know there's some parents who are here, they have their teenagers or their high school students, and yeah. they begin to question uh, particular things. How should we engage these teenagers for them to be responsive? Or how, yeah. where, because I'm hearing like the teachers are, they, they are normal, they are going through a normal stage. But many times we hear everybody complaining about high school, uh, they are teenagers and all those kind of things. But I'm hearing from you, they are going through a normal transitioning. So help me understand and other parents, then how should we engage yeah. these young people to be able to come to an understanding, where is it that we, we normally sort of lose them, and how do we then go about to engage them? Okay. Uh, when, when, what I would say is that uh, if somebody was to look at life the way you are looking at it, as a teenager, the issues of teenage age is all about growing up. Actually, I say the things you see teenagers do, it is their business of growing up. And one day they'll come out of it. Let me take an example. When this child was at around 18 to three months, their business of growing up was centered around the annual. So they derived a lot of pleasure in the bedwetting and all that. You'll find a child when they want to feel like grieving themselves, they even go and sit on the, the seat and they wet the, the seat and they come out. It's the time you fight the, the, the potty and all that. But then we, we, by the time you are five years, you, you, you are through with that. And you, that toilet training became a past tense. And now you are, you are out of that. So the same thing, when you talk to a teenager, if you talk to them from the point that, do you know this, my girl? Do you know this, my son? Whatever you are going through, it's gonna pass within you. It's, it's just a thing which is going to pass. And let them understand you also pass them. One of the mistakes we do as parents is we want to, to make our children feel like whatever they are going through, it's so immense and it is something so strange. By the way, these young people at this stage, they, the emotions they go through, the feelings in them, the confusions to which are in them as they try to find their space in this world. You imagine yourself, you have gone to a foreign land and want to find your space. So they are being controlled by some hormones which have started to influx in their body. So they are trying to balance. This is the sound. Who do you want to sit next to the opposite sex? All of a sudden, they just want to be next to the opposite sex throughout. And now you as a parent, instead of looking at them and tell them it is a stage like any other, you start quarreling them. You start kissing them for what they are doing. You start closing them in, in the house forever. So in that process, they end up being rebellious because now they are fighting for their space and you are not giving them that space. So what I would be say, if you want to understand these young people, please understand it is something which is going, it is for a short time. It's not going to live there forever. Another thing is encourage dialogue between these young people. The problem comes because they have reached this point, they can now have hypothetical thinking. So anything you tell them, it's not that of yes, ma'am, the way it was there before. They want to question your, your, your want. They want to question, what are you telling them? Yeah, they want to find out, why are you telling me this? Should, I mean, should, should I not do things my way? So in the process, they end up now being more rebellious. So as a parent, uh, make sure that you give that room for dialogue. There's something which I, you find when these young people, when they reach this stage, they don't want to be with the people. They want always to be alone. If it's going to church, they would rather walk than go in the family car. If it is meals, 
they would rather eat their meals from their bedroom than being with their husbands at the sitting room. And the reason is because of the issues these people are going through, they, they are feeling like you are seeing the inside them. The confusions which are in them, they feel like everybody else knows the confusions in me. So when they now go into this hiding, the parents now start complaining. So when you start complaining, the more they dysfunct. And um, an example I'll give, let's say you have a family function. Before when this child was small, you are the one who determined how they would dress and you just told them where do we go? And they bathed and you went. Now, when they reach this stage, it's not like a matter of where do we go. You need to inform them on time. The, them appearing in a cloud because of the issues going on inside them. They need a lot of time to prepare than you think. You, you think you need and honor them the money so that you can prepare for the function. But them, they need the, the time to prepare to appear before the other because they feel everybody is seeing what is inside me. So when you now tell them we are going for a function and they're like, no, I'm not going for that function. Is it my function? So the parents now start growing. And in the process, you have issues with your child. I've seen somebody's hand up. I don't know whether you'll allow her to, to, ask, to ask a question. We have a friend of mine from watching us from South Africa, Barbara, I've seen her. I don't know whether you'll allow her to ask the question. You are has okay. She, has she raised her hand. She's raised her hand. I can't, I can't see her. She's raised her hand physically or raised her hand in the, in the, in the, in the nini, using the she icon. Has, she has, she has, she has, she's okay. Okay, fine. Yeah, so thank you so much. Let's move on. Um, so I was talking about now, after this stage, we will talk in the reasoning, the ability to plan and all that. So uh, in this stage, another thing we have with the young people, which is in relation to what I was talking about, is they develop their own schemas. Huh? They want to now modify their existing knowledge. And in the process, they may even overhaul the previous existing schemas which were there. They have started to see things in a different way. Let's take, for example, this child when they are young, you hear them say, Daddy will buy me an aeroplane. Daddy will do this for me. So they thought Daddy is such a capable person they can buy them an airplane and they can provide everything. So they have reached a point whereby they have realized this daddy, even a bicycle, may never be able to provide for me. So they are looking at daddy, they are looking at mom from another perspective. They have seen the real mom in them. They have seen now this is the reality. So the schema they had about life somehow has to come down and they have now to develop their own schema. They have to have their own perspective of the why of their life. And in the process, this may lead to change in attitude, even to the academic related work. Some of them, when they grew up, the only careers we mentioned to our children is doctor, engineer, I don't know, nurse. Yeah, we talk, we talk about those, those traditional careers. Now this town knew I can become a doctor. They have now gone to high school and they have been told for you to become an engineer, you must know physics. And they have come to realize this thing called physics is not my taste. It's not, I was not born for this. So they have to develop another schema. What is the next career I can do? These people, they have come to interact with other social, I mean, other people, they have come to identify their own role models. They have learned about many things and they have realized not about the career I thought I can be, I can be something else. So the schema is over, it's, it's going an overhaul. And this schema is going an overhaul in the midst of lots of pressure, especially in our education system, where the grant is the determinant of whether you are intelligent or not. Intelligence is not measured by academic performance. There are so many forms of intelligence. So you, you, you cannot say somebody is very intelligent when they are 
academically endowed. There are people who can get A's, but they can't take care of themselves. The people who can get A's, but they cannot socialize with others. So you cannot say that person is intelligent. It depends which intelligence are you talking about. But in our society, we have only uplifted one form of intelligence, academic intelligence. So the ordinary wants to hide out their state in other beings. And this can bring a lot of conflict and even misunderstanding, and it can affect even the academic performance. Uh, Jocelyn, I want to just come in at a particular point. You've raised a very good point. And you know, even, even from my personal experience, I'm trying to, yes. to, to wonder, I don't know how many of us were able to identify their careers when they were in high school, but I know our system is geared towards that. Our system is such that you're supposed to somehow, before, before, before 844, the 844 we had was by, in class eight, you haven't really thought about careers it's a foreign term you're only studying to pass and go to uh, and go to high school and then you get to high school yeah. and you're not even really taught about careers but you you are supposed to choose courses at a particular point you of course yeah. you choose the ones you're performing well then later on you realize the courses you are choosing were supposed to even be geared towards your career so i want you to yeah. weigh in and, and i know you have you you're, you're getting there and even just to be able to bring this particular point home um, okay. So, so here, here, some I am here I'm, I'm a, as a teenager. I'm undergoing all these um, transitions within my body and development. And then, in addition to that, yeah. I'm supposed to be able to decide. And, and a career is a lifelong decision. Most times, it's something which you pursue and you yeah. pursue, you know, throughout. So, so, yeah. so seeing how th those two can be achieved. And then I, I, I want us to hear from a young person who is here. And she's asking, she's saying, okay, where has she gone? Where has she gone? Uh -huh. Bosses, I hope you're, I hope, I hope I can talk to you, Stella. And she's asking, oh yeah, she's asking, this is Kinsey in 44. Why do adults take us as rebellious and stubborn, yet we are not? <laughs> Okay, that's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a very because even I think all of us we feel we felt misunderstood by our parents. You have the best of intentions when you are questioning, yes. when when you are asking, but now that come is translated to a different thing. And then someone else has asked a very yeah. good point. They have they they are saying the transition period may end up being very yeah. expensive as the children will miss out on great opportunities. How does one mitigate against this? Yes, for instance, this is the this is a stage where maybe you want to you 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 have a fancy towards some careers, and I and I have no issue with with yes. the careers, but maybe you say I want to be, uh, maybe a DJ, and then I have respect for DJs, but I want to be a DJ, and then your parents are thinking, what what is that, you know? And I remember in, 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 in our days, in my days, my, I was thinking I want to become a, a, a near hostess and the, the whole issue of trying to, them trying to think what, where, how, what, you know. So I think even helping us understand mm. how do we communicate this topic of careers and academics and then now all that is going on to these teenagers. Um, Kinsey, are you there? Okay, maybe she'll come in later. Okay. Uh, then yeah. uh, someone else is saying, the adolescent of today is experiencing a myriad of issues, some quite different from what their parents did and what their older siblings have seen. How valid are we as mental health professionals in expecting the teen to go through the different stages considering not much is the same in terms of the family structures, moral standards and um, have changed Religion is not also becoming liberal. Gender is not is now now not a binary education. So things have changed, and so do we expect the teenagers of today to behave as the same as teenagers for the other years from way back? And I know you have you have the slides you're going by, but you you feel free to not. You don't have to go by every slide. You can skip and even time is up. Okay. So respond to these emerging issues they are very pertinent how do we okay. address the some of these things yes okay fine so uh, let me go back to the concept of rebellion 
because that is the, the, the thing most parents will think when a child is doing their things, they, they interpret it to be rebellion. Um, anything a young person will do in the eyes of an adult, it just looks rebellious. From what I've talked about, not wanting to socialize with people, to the aspect of talking with them. Um, you know, we, we are catching that when we talk with somebody, eye contact is a sign of respect. Even the teachers in school, we, we want somebody to, to look at you in the eyes when you are talking. And that is what you call respect. But you find that um, for a young person, because of the issues going through them, that eye contact is a major issue for them. They don't want to even look at you in the eyes. And by the way, if you want to communicate with young people well, don't sit opposite one another and start expecting information from them. It's a block. The minute you, they, they, you look at them, it just blocks. You, their mind completely blocks. If you want them to empty everything to you, just make sure that you are not looking for, I mean, you are not facing one another. And current, like if you have something very important to talk with a young person, go for a drive, just a, 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 a free drive. All of you are looking at the screen and they can tell you anything in that mood. Or go to the kitchen, start cooking. If each of you is busy, nobody is looking at each other and so they will not freak out because of, of that eye contact. So we, we, we are, we are captured and such that high contact is a sign of you are listening and you are concentrating. For the young person, that is not. So you will now find an adult interpreting this is the rebellion. When it comes to now the issue of now career, um, the, the, as you have said, the, their lives are very different from their, uh, I mean, the lives of young people is very different from, from that of the parents. Let me give you for example. When we grew up, majority of us, maybe we saw the TV when we were old. For this young child, these young people we are dealing with now, I can tell you they were baby sat by a TV from the first day they were born. You would leave the cartoon on to go and keep yourself, to keep them busy as you do other things. So the culture they have got is not that culture you are brought up with. So if you are brought up in a, in a home environment, them, they know that Tom and Jerry is their sister, yeah? yeah? Mr. Bean is their uncle. That is the, 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 the culture they have grown up in. So you find that in their thinking, they're not looking at life the way you are looking at. It's completely different. As like you are in two different worlds, but you are operating. Actually, I normally say that uh, the starting a teenager is like trying to read a story where the key points have been censored and you should understand the story. So if you want to understand this story well, unless you are very keen, you will miss the story. So if you are not keen on our young people, you're going to lose them. You will not understand them. And your conclusion will be this person is rebellious. Another thing which may happen with the young people is when they start now finding that their reasoning is not going in line, the reasoning of the parents, they get depressed. And humanly speaking, even you, when people don't seem to understand you on an issue, you look for an alternative. So the young people also look for an alternative. And that is when you hear somebody has gone into drugs, somebody has gone, you, you hear of, I, I mean, the, the young girls have gone into early marriages, they were just looking for somebody who understands them. They're not looking for a husband. They, they, you will fail to understand them. So they went to look for somebody who understands them. And this man showed them they understand. So in the process, they got expectant. And that was not the intention. They were only looking for somebody who can understand them. So this concept of rebellion can make us lose our young people in a very big way. And as a parent, what I would advise you is, Please, can you be, be enlightened on the issues of, the, of uh, parenting? I'm sorry to say the, the eight-year uh, uh, Helen, 
But let me mention that I've written a book called Parenting Teenagers in the 21st Century. If you go to, through some of the materials which are available, you will be able to understand that actually it is me who need and help. It's not my young person. This person was in their business of growing up. But to me, I failed to understand that they are growing up and I expected what was not possible from them. I communicated in a way that this person was not able to understand. Teachers are losing young people in school in the name of rebellion. A child is expelled from school. And if you follow the story, the rebellion is something in quote, which the teacher is saying is rebellion. The child is just questioned some authority somewhere. Now, questioning authority is a normal thing for these young people because as you have said, it's the time their mental development is growing. They, they want to now start, at the logic is growing in them. They can question anything. And we, we don't expect our young people to become adults who cannot reason. So the, the stage they are in, their mental development allows them to reason. So if they are not reasoning, then they will not grow normal. When they reason and question the authority in school, they are expelled because they are rebellious. So you, 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 you fail to understand. Where does the rebellion start? Because to this child, it was not rebellion. I just asked, I just asked a question. I asked a prefect a question. The prefect told me to do this, and I asked them a question. The teacher punished me for this, and I was trying to put across what happened, and the teacher refused to understand me. So now this bit of rebellion is a bit, it's a bit tricky, but it is the adults, according to me, who have the business to understand, because these young people are growing, so we give them the right guidance. Thank you, Jocelyn, for that. And I want to come to that particular point. Our time is actually running over. We are, we are, we are, we are up on time. And I've seen, uh, Margaret, uh, your hand has been okay. up. But, and I also saw, you, Margaret, you said a very important point on the part of the brain development. I want you to unmute, Margaret, uh, if you can hear me. And um, Jocelyn, as you, as you move to see how you can move to the, to the few remaining slides, Margaret, respond to us on what you shared in the in the um, in the yeah. chat section about the brain and development we somehow i feel they connect to what jocelyn is saying about how their mental development is affecting how they are behaving margaret on, on google study about the brain of teenagers and if If you go to study about the brain of teenagers, the part of the brain that deals with emotions, the amygdala is the brain that deals with judgmental. So you find that under the teenagers, they have uh, so many emotions within themselves. And if you look at the part of the brain, the, the structure of the brain of a teenager, it, it is partitioned into different structures and that part of emotions is so big, the part of rebellion is so big, the part of sex is also growing. So as uh, parents maybe and as teachers, we need to learn about the teenagers and their part of the brain so that when we are handling them, we should be able to understand them so that we are not able to mishandle them because this is the time they are not making the correct judgment. They are trying to make decisions like adults, but they are not doing the right decision making. So as adults, we are supposed to be there to guide them and not to maybe ridicule them or not uh, tell them not to make the decision, but we are supposed to guide them to stand up and guide them so that they can make the right decision. So I think about the brain development, we need to understand their brain part of the development. The same way our brain part as female is not the same as male brain. So we need to understand the brain of teenagers. Actually, from here, if you go back to the, the study of the brain of the teenagers, you will understand the teenagers very well why they at war 
the way they are acting. Yes, they are, rebe they, they are undergoing rebellious stage. We need to come up and guide them as adults because it is not their wish. Thank you so much, Margaret. I want to allow you to stop at that. Thank you for helping us understand. And I remember earlier on, we had Catherine Musiani. Um, she shared with us about social media and, the, and, and teenagers and, and how, and I think she showed us about the brain of the young people and how that makes them vulnerable decisions they make. So thank you for weighing that in, uh, Margaret, I appreciate. Um, Jocelyn, we, we are already yes. past time. So are you able to wind up in around five minutes so we can have some time for interactions and the questions? Okay, let me just do a conclusion. We, okay. I believe we'll always have some more time yes. here and we move on. And I will make a conclusion uh, from what our sister Margaret has said. She has talked about the brain. And I'll say this, because young people, their brain is developing. Actually, what happens is that for the teenagers, the prefrontal area of the brain that contains the higher level thinking and allows persons to consider consequences and make decisions and think critically is not normally fully developed. So if you want to think uh, critically about a teenager, their brain that, the, the part of the brain that Lord Jocelyn, we've lost you. And as we wait for her to come back in, I have seen some very interesting um, comments in the chat section. Them. Jocelyn, okay. you had lost you at some point there. Oh, sorry. Okay, you now can continue. Back, uh, yeah, I think network issues, sorry. So uh, uh, I was saying that if now, handouts, we are able to understand that this part of the brain, the prefrontal plate, which makes the decision is not developed. And we are waiting them to make decisions. It doesn't work. So if we now understand that, we can help them. My network is a bit unstable. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay, fine. So if, if we are keen on that, we can even eliminate issues of academic among our students. Most of our students are getting lost, not because they are not academically adored, but because of this concept of conflict and rebellion. They, they behave themselves, parents interpret it as rebellion, and now the child goes to look for solace in other things. You find a good student, very somebody who can, could have been somebody in society has got lost into drugs. But when you go follow the story, why are you into drugs? You'll find people, they are like, nobody understands me. So I went to relieve my stress. So in the process of relieving the stress, they spoil the brain. And by the way, you know, drugs will affect a young person more than an adult because the brain is still developing. A, a person whose brain is fully developed, which happens after 25 years, cannot be affected by drugs as a young person whose brain is developing. So if they take drugs and the brain is developing, it now becomes worse and the addiction becomes worse than them. So if we are able to understand our young people, we will save our society in many, in many ways. We will be able to exploit the academic potential in our young people. We will prepare them for life when we allow them to make these decisions and think basically and question politics, question authority in a healthy way, you'll be preparing even the, the future leader. So it is on us parents, as somebody has put it, it is on us adults undering our young people. We have to be enlightened and understand why the young people are behaving in the way they are behaving. So in conclusion, I'll say that as the teenagers begin to explore academic possibilities and own identity, adults have to play the role of a mediator whose fidelity is fully developed to the recipient 
whose fidelity is only beginning to show up. So the parents, you have more responsibility. Your fidelity, your ability to make judgment, your ability to draw conclusion is, is developed. Please help these young people. And if you want a teenager to change the academic perspective, approach their issues with respect to now. At the beginning, I said, young people do not have that future you talk to them. You are telling them you are wasting time that you will not get a career in the future. That future is you who can see. Their future is now. Please address their issues from the now. They look at life from now. You, you, you waste time yourself. That is why your future is not okay. So that them, they think their future is bright and that they exist in the now. If you want to get to the young people, please address them from the now. It is easier to penetrate them when you look at their life from the present. That future does not exist. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening to me and uh, God bless you so much. And there you can get my contact. You can get to chat even more after this. Thank you so much, Erin. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jocelyn, for that. And now we can have some questions and we can have the presentation. But I'm hearing that what you said, telling us by the end of the day, the work is on us as the adults and the parents to go out of our way to understand the, 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 the young people who are in either high school or in the teenage years, yeah? Hello, yes. sir. Hello, Jocelyn. Yes. I'm hearing what you're saying is Hello. that is that the, the, the work the work falls yes. on the on the older generation to go out of their way to understand the yes. teenagers. Yeah, that is the message I'm passing across. And that's why I was using the example of a small house. It is okay. a house we took that responsibility to make them grow. Please remember, teenagers are not grown. They are only the same size with them. Their mental ability is not yet grown. So please take the role and take them through the journey until they are mature enough. Thank you for that. Thank you, Justin, for that. And I, and, I, and I want to appreciate everybody for coming in and listening to us. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing various, various questions, various comments. And I know the bosses you are in, and I've seen your, 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 your comments and your questions and your comment, concerns. Um, uh, hey, okay, the, question, the comments are so many. Where do I start from? Okay, Galaxy, you're saying, oh, please, <laughs> Helen, you can invite her again. We need this without rushing. We have more questions in this stage. Very true. Um, then Fatima is asking, how do we address their future from now? I didn't realize under that point. Then someone is asking me to send the, the MPESA number. The number I have put there is the new Safaricom number. Safaricom number for nowadays, they're not 07, it's 0111. So it is not wrong, it is right, it is correct. It's a new Safaricom number. It is correct, Sheila and anybody else who's wondering that. Okay. Um, okay. And so I want to open this up to even other people in the platform. I've seen Mr. Kimani Gidongo, you're in. I've seen uh, various people I know, Catherine, uh, Catherine Musiani, I've seen you in. And anybody, anybody else who works with teenagers, as, as, as Jocelyn takes her cup, her drink of water, just to be able to weigh in. But also, if you're a teen, teenager or a high school, um, in high school, and you want to maybe say, what have you learned that you didn't know? What do you wish maybe you'd want to communicate to us as parents to be aware of? This is the right time. Please go ahead and put up your hand, your hand in the, your hand in the Zoom. <laughs> then I will see you and I will, I will, I will, I will let you ask. Kinsey, are you able to talk now? Kinsey from the, I think there was Kinsey. They stumbled. Yes, called is this Kinsey and Stella? Those two. They are in Hope. Any one of them, you can go. Um, then I'm also seeing a, a very interesting comment here. Um, how do we handle them? Them now means the, our children in high school or in teenage. How do we handle them when they push us away? Um, very good question. Uh, Pauline is in the house. I, I'm seeing we have very many professionals in the house. So being able to understand how do we handle all these issues. Um, 
Okay, okay. So I think I can I can open it up now. Uh, there's a there's a there's a there's a comment I also saw in the chat section. Someone is saying, asking that if we why do we why do why do why what why is the burning in high school? Why is the burning in why is the so much so rampant burning in high school? And I think I would also want us to ask ourselves why now. I think in the in many some years back that was a very uncommon scenario. It was an it was an hard off. It was it was an an, out, an extreme. It would be one in a one in a very few. So how why has it become more of a common trend in this particular age we are living in? And I think I saw someone else, someone life pillars asked me the same thing. Given the dynamics we are seeing in society currently, do do we apply the same theoretical uh, ways to 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 explain our or do, do we redefine? Do we um, understand them differently? So I think many things are emerging from this. We even us as where we stand, we can question why is it that this trend ha these trends are emerging and seem seemingly becoming more now and they weren't so a few years back. So thank you for that. And I want to open it up now. Mr. Kimani Gidongwa, I've seen you in, I've seen you commenting, please go ahead. And I know you'd like to sit back and listen, but I want to you to come in and say something. And I see your hand is raised. Yes, go ahead. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Kimani. Helen, Helen yeah. do we know our children? That is one of the questions that we need to ask ourselves. Who, who are our children to us? Even the youngsters, leave alone the teenagers, because the moment you don't know your children, you're going to experience some of the challenges that uh, we see when they become teenagers. And uh, research has shown that um, children do not associate themselves with strangers. And we have seen situations where even a two-year-old girl, I mean girl, will be able to associate better with the house help than the mother or the father. Where is, has this to come from? Because we are so busy. We wake up in the morning at five and we leave. We have pushed our children to boarding school. And when they come, the best thing we can do is to take them to Bouncing Castle or other places. And we are busy with our iPhones and everything else. And we don't even listen to them. So if you don't create that kind of friendship and you don't even understand them, they are going to rebel. Barbara from South Africa, there's a lady from South Africa is saying, there is this uh, African proverb that uh, if the village does not uh, embrace the children or the youth, they'll burn it so that they can feel the warmth of it. And that is the truth. And we as parents are banned by our own villagers because we do not even know them. The dynamics have changed. Uh, clothing has changed. The issues of uh, career has also changed. So many things that we understand. Or do I keep on saying that uh, I'll bring my children the way I was brought up? So let us just take a uh, reflect. As somebody has asked about the future, how do we communicate the future from now? Listen to them. Be friends to them. Talk to them from their own wild view. Do not just assume that you know everything. You actually do not know. The children know much more than we actually do. So if we don't listen to them, we don't give them um, uh, an ear to listen to. We always say, let, let us go to Helen's birthday. Then they ask, who is Helen? Will I find my age mates over there? So it is not a matter of now telling them, do and do and do and do. When you do parenting, at this particular stage, you are actually being like, almost like a consultant, almost like a consultant. You are consulting with each other. The closest it also comes is like counseling, counseling them. Listen to them first. Once you listen to them, then you can be able to answer them, to take them to the right way. Just, just don't think there are very many degrees that we know literally everything about these young children. And whatever is disturbing them, let us listen to them, let us understand them, and then we can cancel them from there. Let me stop there, Helen. Wow, thank you so much, Mr. Gizongo, and thank you uh, for that, that it's, it's, it's the parents to be able to ad acquire the new role as consultants and, and, and maybe uh, um, relinquish some of, the, some, of the, um, some of the roles we had earlier on. And thank you, Barbara, for that very profound quote. 
Okay, um, I, I'm seeing we are, we are winding up and I don't know if there's anybody else who wants to come in and say something. Yes, I do. Yes, go ahead, Sister Florence. Yes, I want to really echo what uh, Mr. Kedongo has said and uh, summarize it with um, an advert that was going on some times ago in um, Citizen TV. And maybe it was uh, an awakening call, but maybe many of us never even paid attention to it. Where there was this little girl uh, just sitting on the table, um, busy with uh, you know computer gadgets, and the father is very busy with the computer, the mother is very busy with her own thing. And the kid, you know, is trying to get attention of the parents, and none of them is paying attention to this girl until she says, Daddy, can I need now? It's a kupata mu system dog, and then the you know, the daddy, you know, now gets a shock, and they all look at each other with the mother. So, already that is a sign that our kids are not getting what they need from the parents, they have become babies of the maid. Thank you for that, um, sister. That's a very profound point that indeed, um, it seems that there's um, an aspect of sort of uh, relinquishing some responsibility to, to the maids or to the people who are, who are there at home with the children. But I also want to just say or ask, isn't that some, sense that some of the realities, we, we, because some parents really have to work um, extra hours or they have, they have positions they hold which require them to go ahead and work those extraneous hours. So just in just being fair and asking, is, is it really that they, they, we can blame them entirely or how do we balance that? But I don't want to go into that. I want to ask, as there's a lady who's asking here, and maybe someone can reach out to her. She's asking, my mom listens, but I can't master the courage to tell her some of the, my problems. How can one deal with that? And I think that's a very, good question many teachers they wonder how do i communicate or how do i tell my parents what i'm going through or how do i how can i do that how do i have the courage to be able to start the conversation with them anyone who wants to weigh in on that particular one helen wants to monopolize but let me say this mm -hmm. go ahead yeah what is the relationship between this uh the lady and the mother yeah the mother could be listening but you know even when the body language i'm listening yes but what is the body language that i'm giving to this particular child that i may be um, punished by what i am asking so you realize there's some little bit of disconnect between the child and the parent all right or maybe what are the responses that come out of that or does she feel satisfied that uh, the mother is giving in the uh, the necessary uh, request or advice that uh, she was looking for. So there is some little bit of disconnect there and uh, we can always uh, break it down by them becoming more friendly to each other, spending more time and having a mother-daughter or mother-son uh, relationship. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gidongo. Pauline, hi, Pauline, I'm glad to see you here. Please go ahead and make your comment. Uh, hi, Wangoi, and hi, everyone. Uh, sometimes when we communicate with teenagers, these are some of the mistakes that we make as parents that will push them not even to share with us their innermost fears or whatever they are going through. Why? Because when teenagers don't comply or when they resist or when they want to share something, as a parent, we are advised not to preach, not to lecture, not to advise. Your teenager is trying to tell you how her relationship with her boyfriend is looking, right? But you are there busy advising, you are there busy preaching. So don't preach, don't lecture. Don't repeat yourself. We know when we, in our times, we know we did A, B, C, D. Get them to agree and then please don't get them to agree to your side. At this is how you need to relate with your boyfriend. So as, as Mr. Gedongo has said, sometimes why teenagers will shy from sharing with us is because we are not there to listen to them, but we are there busy trying to advise them, trying to lecture them, giving them ultimatums. You know, if you don't do ABCD, that boyfriend is going to leave you. 
don't do that. Be fair, be present. Show that you are present even with your body language. Show that you're present even with eye contact. Though uh, what Jocelyn said was that when you maintain a direct eye contact, they will shy away. And remember, uh, during teenager, if a parent was number one, chances are, and this is research, that you'll be pushed to number three. So accept that you are no longer number one and peers have taken your position. Sometimes I encourage parents to share with their teenagers what their teenage life looked like. Just share with them what life was like for you when you were a teenager. We were not ages. Let them understand that and they will be able to open up. Let them know that you also made mistakes. Like for example, I was telling my teenagers, a mother of teenagers, how I responded to a boyfriend who wrote me a letter. And you know, they were like, oh, mommy, that was very, uh, you were very paranoid. So share with them so that they also know that you are not an angel. That's what I want to say. And thanks so much, Justin. That was very powerful. Thank you, Pauline. Thank you, Mr. Okay, Mr. Um, who, uh, Samuel, somebody was coming. But before we, you come in, I want, to, I want to bring in a comment I've seen here by Anne, Anne Keith. You said, and I want to maybe, uh, if you can hear me and you can just comment on this, you said that time, teen is, teen is time or something like that. And I've seen you trying to expand by doing it and I would want to hear that. How is teen, how is teen time, Anne? Or she's gone. I don't know if she's gone. Um, but I've seen that. That's a very interesting comment. Um, yes, go ahead. Who wanted to come in? Yeah, I was just going to say uh, that uh, sometimes also, uh, if a parent is too religious and cannot talk on social issues, biological issues, everything is, you know, approached from a religious perspective, that can also make, you know, the teenager shy or because the language that is spoken is only godly language anything outside that is dirty sometimes it it makes them not even want to talk about their own experience their own sexuality if we religialize everything so much to the other extreme okay thank you for that and i wish i would have been able to hear from somebody who is in that you know we are talking to parents about these things but i wish i could hear from a teen or a, someone in high school and um we have them in this forum <laughs> I, think, I, I think i've seen a few but i don't know why i don't know why their parents have refused them to talk bosses i know I, i've seen you i've seen you bosses somewhere and i saw you with your teenagers seated very comfortably listening in eh? and i'll call you tomorrow to tell me why you're refusing to talk um they are here Okay, go ahead. Awesome. Okay, I hi. Hi. I'm Kinsey. I'm from the Bosses family. And uh, I was just going to give my comment like when you guys or the psychologist or the consultant come to talk to people like the teens, we know we are lively. We need people to like at least engage us. We don't just come and start talking boring words or lecturing us or saying things that maybe you know we want we want things said simply and uh, maybe in a fun way and uh, engage us. So maybe when you talk to us, maybe as the parents or as our adult friends you don't just lecture us and shout and think that you're always right Gosh. thank you wow thank, thank you thank you for that stacy and hey, bosses you have work <laughs> i am so glad you're both like all of this <laughs> um hi Hello. hi go ahead lois Yes, um, I think there's something, there's a new trend mm -hmm. that um, I've, I've handled and including this week that really concerns me as a, as a, as a, as a counselor. Mm -hmm. And uh, you find that most uh, children are now at home with their parents. Mm -hmm. And I like what Stacey is saying, that um, then they start arguing and quarreling with one another over certain issues. Then there's the children are now being the ones telling them to calm down, to tone down, 
and, and sort of like even lecturing them. And, and it's becoming a, a serious concern. So there's a role switch that really maybe we need to see how we can be able to create that awareness. Because I've found it extremely uh, challenging, you know, letting the parents know that they are putting children as parents and then they are the ones now, you know, acting like the children. <laughs> yeah. Very, that's very good, Lois. And and I am, um, hmm. but and I think that there, there, there are several ways of just looking at that. But that's a very good point. That that, that so somehow the the teens are now the ones helping the parents to calm down and to to just calm down and and not to to get either angry or to get to go to the go to the extreme. Thank you for that. Um, R Rosemary, Rosemary Mongai. Hello. Hi, Rosemary. Go ahead. Rosemary is the mommy. Let Shalom talk with the teenager. Is the one who was writing the messages. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, I am Shalom, and uh, you know sometimes uh, we don't know what to do because we feel like if we tell our parents some of these things, they wouldn't understand. And uh, uh, some, some parents say that if you don't tell them your things, you will go tell your friends. But in most cases, that is not true. Because some of us prefer keeping things to ourselves and not actually telling anyone uh, for reasons I am not sure. Um, but maybe we feel like sometimes crying or something of the sort will, will solve stuff. And will you know you know sometimes keeping things to yourself is not healthy, but I mean no one knows. So help me explain to my mom that uh, <laughs> sometimes we want to talk, but then we just can't talk because we don't uh, we don't know what your your your, your reaction will be. So we're just scared and then I can just keep quiet. You know, it will help that, although it won't, but it will just help. Yeah, so help me explain to her. Uh, wow thank you for that you know I'm, I'm i'm so happy i'm hearing from teens because psychologists and counselors and all of you people who are in this field i think this uh, is it stacy kinsey from the bosses she says something very important that we need to see how do we communicate so that we are able to, to relate with them so even as we are continuing with these sessions and particularly on teens tuesday um, the challenge is upon us also, as we're telling parents to, 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 to do all these things, but now we, remember we are having them in the sessions. How do we communicate with them? Okay, now Rosemary, <laughs> who wants to come in and, 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 and respond to the question about how do we, the, the kids are afraid of the reactions that the parents will have. So how do we, Rosemary, just come in and help me understand what, what is it that you've understood from what your daughter has said? Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> this is an uphill task. Because it's an uphill task. It's an uphill task because many are the times that, you, okay, when she was growing up, you're the best friend. Then all of a sudden, things have changed. Like uh, the speaker said, she has gone out there, high school, mixed with the other children. And now there are those things that she thinks that she can keep to herself. Uh, it's frustrating to a parent as much as one may want to help, but at the same time, it's very difficult to read her mind on her heart. Yeah. Pauline, I want you to come in at this point and just say, say something. I, 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 I know you were there. I hope you haven't left. Pauline Wanje. <laughs> yes, I'm there. I'm there, Erin. Yes, uh, I, I, I know I can cut you off, God, and you're ready. But I just want you to, you've had Rosemary's uh, sentiments and you've had her daughter's sentiments. But I feel yeah. like, I, I feel like that's, that's, how, that's something that can be worked on. Just be able to weigh in on that. Yeah, uh, just like uh, the parent has said, uh, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's uh, disheartening to see this girl, this boy that you've grown up with, uh, you are friends, etc. 
at a time they, they just turn and you know they, they are not opening up to you. It's not easy for a parent. But what we are saying, we need to understand and appreciate that at that particular age, when they are in their teenage, uh, that's what usually happens. That peers will be very, very important. There is a book by 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 Gordon. Gordon uh, I can't remember the other name. Uh, when he, say, he talks about if we are not there for our children, they will be peer oriented. So understanding that at that particular stage, at teenage, this is what happens. Friends take priority. Friends becomes number one. And when you understand that as a parent, you will come in and get to understand who, who is this that my teenager is hanging out with. This is where as a parent, it's, it's up to you to get to understand who are my teenager's friends. Uh, the, the, the daughter said that sometimes they want to open up, but they are, they are not sure of how the reaction, uh, the parents will, will react and uh, the reaction that they are going to get. Like I said, we were once teenagers. We also made mistakes. Remember, even as you approach your teenager to open up to you, let them know that you are not an angel. You made mistakes. You are also there so that they can feel, oh, ah, Kube mom understands that this is what happened. And uh, the fatherly parents, don't lecture. Don't lecture, don't advise. This, these are some of the mistakes we make as parents. Thank you, Pauline. Um, before you go, before I release you to go, I want to just um, respond to Rosemary's sentiment. She's saying she feels frustrated as a parent, and I kind of I kind of feel what she's coming yes, yes. from. Um, Sorry. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it, it's frustrating. It's frustrating, but uh, I, I think, uh, like uh, Jocelyn said, sometimes even when uh, I, I do a lot of teenage uh, counseling, as teenagers yeah, sent to me by school yeah. for counseling, and sometimes yes. I look at this teenager and I, I feel it's not the teenager that has problems. Maybe I would encourage Jocelyn to check what is this that frustrates her. Is it the fact that, you know, uh, this, this baby girl, this boy is getting an autonomy? And uh, once she sorts her own issues, she'll be there to understand the, the faces that this boy or this girl is going through. And uh, even communicating with a teenager with a eye statement. Wow, sometimes I feel very bad that uh, looking at where we are coming from and where we are at, and I see you drifting apart every other day. I don't know what is exactly happening. And the teenager will be there to tell you, no more what, mommy? Don't mind, I'm there. So I'm not uh, sharing with you everything. Just know that I care for you and I love you very much. So opening up and uh, sharing what your, your feelings are, I think it's also very important. Wow, and I, and I think I want to end at that particular point. Thank you, Pauline. That was wonderful. That was a wonderful way of just uh, clarifying that. Um, thank you. And, and thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Jocelyn, for taking us through this fantastic, fantastic session. And you have brought in so much insight. Thank you for allowing us even to, to, to be able to have the discussion and bringing that intriguing aspect of what is, what is, where are the gaps? What is happening? Okay. And thank you to our parents, particularly those ones who are courageous enough okay. to listen in and sit there with your teenager. It's not easy. I, I, I have sat with my children sometimes and they tell me, mom, why don't you ask us instead of telling us and discussing among us yourselves? So even as we go on, I want to challenge us as parents, sit with your children during these sessions. They'll, they'll, give you, they'll tell you, Apo new kweli, Apo new wongo. Apo, this is, this is true. Please, mom, do that. Please, dad, change that. So even as you're having children, sit in with them, let them give you feedback. Let them be able so to hear what you're learning. They'll also help to hold you accountable on some of the things where we could be doing wrong. It's a safe place to be able to, to, be able to have these discussions because they are learning, you're learning, we are all learning. So tomorrow we have Mr. Kimani Gidongo and Mr. Kimani Gidongo, today I was told to tell, tell you or whoever, to tell the husbands to stop annoying their wives during this period of COVID. Some want to control the whole TV and put their put the the program they want. So even as you come in tomorrow, I hope you somehow see how to address that. He'll be talking about contemporary family law issues. And I think he will share more on what that means tomorrow. Mr. Gizongo, yes, I see you unmuted. As as you say bye bye and welcome to tomorrow's yes, session. Yes. yes. How are you? Fine, thank you. Not, 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 not all husbands Helen. give their 
making noise. In fact, mine is switched off because we are all keen on this meeting. In, you know, I know you're a psychologist, boss. I know you're a psych so you 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 may have psychology on your side. You are playing it. You are you are psychologically fam brought up family. That one I know. Yes, there are others who don't know this. Protecting my brothers. Yes, natural husband. Okay, go on. I think Lois was talking, or somebody was talk commenting, saying something. Hello. Yes, Jocelyn. I I just said, ask the natural husband. It may be like you said, it's a, a psychological word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for laughing. Less that was that's a hilarious comment. Um, <laughs> okay, I know the family, so I won't go beyond that. But boss, you had your psychological husband, psychologist husband. That is a special kind of a husband to have. Um, Jocelyn, yes. Yes, this, this comment from Pepe Blessing. She says uh -huh. she's pro, she's in for free. Next time in invite kids and parents and let the kids of Christmas parents to be greater. Hello. I would Jocelyn, we can't be able to hear you. Your network is having a problem. We can't hear you. So I was saying this, eh? Yes. Hello. Yes. There's this there's this comment from Pepe Blessing. Yes. She's saying this is hope from three. Next time invite the kings and parents and let the kings talk more. Please take that to consideration. Okay, thank you. I have noted that next time. But you know now that the parents are the ones who have access to this. So yes, parents, please invite your teens. If you're a parent mm -hmm. here and you know a parent who has teens, tell them to tune in when yeah. they're having sessions for teenagers. And then number two, I, we will definitely allow the teens to talk more. Mr. Gidongo, over to you as you wind up. Are you a psychologist husband or are you a husband husband who takes the remote? <laughs> I am all. Yes. I cannot divorce myself from being a psychologist or being the legal husband. Okay. But um, I'll tell my wife to maybe share a statement uh, to confirm that, but not today. Tomorrow, tomorrow we'll have a topic that every single issue you touch in psychology is actually law related, especially the matters to do with the family issues. You're talking about marriage, you're talking about separation, you're talking about divorce. Uh, separation of uh, or division of the matrimonial property, parenting, adoption, maintenance of children, all those things. Okay, thank, thank you me. very much. And we look forward to it, Mr. Gidongo. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And thank you for making it a, such an interactive, interactive session. Thank you, Jocelyn. Um, yeah, I want to wind up at this point and wish us a very good evening and see you tomorrow.